Okay. So, first off, oh, wait, wrong direction. Oh, it's not. Okay, well, anyway, you can see the pile of books up there. I managed to stuff an entire another box of books that I need to read into that bookshelf. So, there's that. There's also this awesome shirt that my mom got for me when she was down here. And I'm really excited about finally getting to wear it. Because apparently I don't have to work today. So, I guess I get to do my homework. Yay. But, um... I finished my library book last night, which is probably part of why I woke up at 3 a.m. with a migraine. I don't know what it is about migraines really liking 3 a.m., but there's something about 3 a.m. But, um, there's that. It, it's a decent-sized book, and it was really, really, really good. I'm going to try and do a better review, <laughs> because I like this book a lot. I know the one I did yesterday, I really liked the book, but I was a really cruddy review because I was working on finishing this book. But this one is called Dark Amelia. I may be pronouncing her name wrong, but I was pronouncing it Amelia. Um, and it's a book speculating, it's a novel of course, so it's fictional, but it's speculating that um, Amelia Bassano, who got married and then she was Amelia Lanier, was the, who Shakespeare wrote about in the Dark Lady Sonnets. And she's a real person, which I'd never heard of her before, and her, um, a lot of the people in the story are real people that I'm, even though it's just, like, one of my favorite time periods, I'm not very familiar with a lot of them. Um, so it was really cool to read more about that time period and stuff that is real that I didn't know about. But, um, her, in and of herself, in, in real life, she was, um, like okay let me read what it says in the back because there's this big long historical note in the back and what the author uh, Sally O'Reilly says is it is certainly not accurate to suggest that a woman in the Elizabethan or Jacobian period would be feminist in any sense that we recognize today but the poetry that Amelia Lanier wrote shows her championing the cause of Eve and drawing attention to the role of women in the Passion of the Christ Academics have referred to her poetry as proto-feminist. Um, I don't know if that's how she was in real life, but her in the book, she was really, like, it's not fair that I can't do stuff that men can do, and she did it anyway. She was really learned. She had studied a lot. She could speak Greek and Latin. Um... She read stuff in the original Greek and Latin and French. She was originally in the court of Elizabeth, and she was a mistress to Lord Hunston. And she got pregnant with, in history, um, probably Lord Hunston's baby. And she, uh, he arranged a marriage for her with her cousin Alfonso Lanier. It's her last name. But in the book, it speculates that... It was Shakespeare's kid, and, um, the book is really mostly about her. There, it, it's divided, it's like it's a play in and of itself. It's got acts and scenes and everything. So it's only, like, the first act, I think. Yeah, I think it's only the first act that Shakespeare's really in a lot. I mean, he shows up in the rest of it, but the rest of it is just about her and her life and all of that. And she eventually ends up getting some poetry that she wrote published, which is a real thing that happened. That was really cool. Um, I guess it's kind of a spoiler. It, probably a spoiler. Um, but she... It, it's... in the, Towards the end of the book, she writes this play called The Tragedy of Lady Macbeth. And Burbage in charge of the Globe Theater, of course, is looking for new stuff for new King James of England, and he can't find anything, so he finally gives up and asks her, because even though he she's a woman, he knows she writes well. And he reads her play, sends it back to her, and says, sorry, this isn't any good, I can't use it. And then next thing she knows, she's hearing about this new play called The Tragedy of Macbeth coming out, written by Shakespeare, and they basically almost completely plagiarized her play. 
Which wasn't a thing back then because there was no such thing as plagiarism. There was no copyrights or anything. So, and plus she was a woman, so nobody cared. And um, she was all mad about that. And then it just goes in there. And I won't tell you exactly everything that happens, but there's that. And it's it's a really 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 good book. Um, it's interesting. For sure, but it's really good. I would definitely recommend reading it. Um, I was looking for something else at the library and found this on the library website. So, of course, I had to order it. And I'm very glad I did. I wish there was, like, another one or something else like that. But I'll probably just work on one of my random books lying around the house next. Because I really need to get those re read. Read? Read. Um, because I shoved two boxes in that bookshelf, and then I have a box upstairs, and then I just got two books at the library, or not at the library, at Goodwill yesterday, so I should know better than to look at the books, but I did look at the books, and I found the two, and I bought them, so I'm going to have to read those two. So maybe if I get my schoolwork done today, I will get something read or start on something or finish something I was already reading. Who knows? But yeah, that's about it. I'm kind of sad that this book is over, but I'm because I enjoyed it so much. But I'm also kind of glad because I kept trying to read it at work, and I'd read like one paragraph, and I'd have to take an order, and I'd forget where I was at. So I go back to it, and then somebody would want to talk, and I, I just gave up on taking it to work because I couldn't get anything done. It was just getting on my nerves. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye.